Christ lives, meaning God didn't say, okay, well, nobody got to live by the rules. He just he put the rules out there. Somebody got to live up to them. Yeah. You can't, but I'm going to send him to do it. So he lived up to the standards of the law and met the demands of the law on our behalf. Remember, he said, I always do what pleases the Father. And then he also took and died the death that we deserve because we didn't live up to the law. And so on both hands, he takes away the wrath and the punishment, and he provides a righteousness. He does it all. That's why he says, it is finished. Nothing left to be done. So, so hold your place right quick and then turn to Isaiah chapter 40, just so we can see kind of that concept played out before us. <clears throat> Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 40. Okay, so somebody read for us. We're going to look at verses 1 and 2. Somebody read those for us, please. So, so here is gospel language. So again, he's speaking to Israel, and Israel represents who? The chosen, the people of God. These are my children. So he's speaking. He says to Isaiah, he says, comfort my people. So here, first of all, this must be the language of the preacher, not a, the language of what the law and the Pharisees do. You didn't do that, and they so exacting and precise, and you better do this, and you better stop that, and you better leave that alone. You wouldn't see it. And it's just so exacting. When he says, no, nah, man, because it ain't on them to live up to the standards per se. It ain't them. That they can't accomplish it on their own. So he says, this must be the language. Comfort my people. Comfort them. And you got to have something to comfort them with. I think about, uh, y'all remember Snoopy, right? The dude, Linus, right? He had his, he, he never let that blanket go. It comforted him. And this is what we must do with the gospel. Never let it go. Don't turn to works-based righteousness and trying to earn your way into it. Never let it go. Because on your darkest hour, if you turn to what you got to do or what you didn't do, you're going to be in a state of confusion. Your joy, your hope going to be gone because it's based upon what you did. And when you see that you haven't done and you in error and all of that, no peace, no joy, no rest. But when you can preach the gospel to yourself on, the, on your worst day, that when I know I've blown it, yeah, I need to confess my sinfulness to the Father and I know I missed the mark, but I'm not going to lay here and have a pity party and be stressed out and confused and let the devil get on my helmet. Now I think I ain't saved and I don't know no more. Now I don't want to go to church. And No, man, let me look back to Christ and be like, Father, I know I messed up and you paid for that. Father, give me strength to overcome my weakness. Be strong in me. I got to get my eyes back on him, not run from him and try to hide it like I messed up and I'm embarrassed. No, that's why you died to save me so I can have access. I can boldly, as the scriptures say, come before the throne of grace in the time of need. When do I need him? All the time. All the time I need him. And if we don't understand that, we think that we get on these spurts of, I'm doing good right now. I don't know if you've been there before. When you get that good streak and you're rolling and you think you're doing it, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> conk out because he got to let you know you ain't doing nothing. It's only when you stay focused on me do you have the strength to be what you're supposed to be, to do what you're supposed to do. So he tells the preacher, comfort my people. Don't, don't make them scared and afraid. No, comfort them. Let them know it's all good. It's been accomplished for you. And the reason why you're struggling is because you're taking your eyes off of him and you're tripping on this other stuff. Get your eyes back up to him. 
And so he says, speak comfortably to my people, says your God. Speak comfortably um, to Jerusalem. Cry unto her. Like you got to, with passion, with like, man, you got to get this. You got to know this. If you don't know nothing else, you got to know this. That her warfare is accomplished. The warfare, the warfare, the warfare. Enemies with God. We were at war with God. We were at war with God. And y'all know we can't win that war. We can't fix it. We can't appease it. We can't throw up a white flag. If the blood ain't been washed over you, there's no white flag you can throw up. There's nothing you can run to. If it ain't the blood covering you, he's coming to get you when it's time. Everybody that was outside of that ark, it was no hope for them. Even though they might have been crying, they might have been saying, Jesus, please, God, help me. But the day of salvation has already come. And so there's no hope for us unless we in the ark, which is his Christ. And so he says the warfare is accomplished, meaning it's finished, that her iniquity is pardoned, our sinfulness has been dealt with, for we have received of the Lord's hand double. And so double is the truth of the gospel, meaning he's taken away wrath, by dying on our behalf, he took away the wrath that we deserve. And so God's cup of wrath is empty. Christ, that's the, remember he said, if this cup can pass over, let it pass. Yes, sir. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. Meaning he drunk the cup completely dry. The cup of God's wrath that was stored up for people who have sinned against him, he drunk that cup. So now all who believe have had their sins purged, and there's no more wrath left for us. And this is big because you got to understand there's two judgments that we're going to go before. Two judgments. There's two judgments. Either you're going to go to one judgment or the other. There's two judgments. There is, first of all, the great white throne of judgment. And at the great white throne of judgment, this is just where it's just the law just going to do what it was supposed to do in, in the earth to make you say, I'm a sinner and confess my sin and I need Christ. Where is he? But it's going to be to no avail at that end time if you don't have Christ. You stand before the great white throne of judgment is nothing but judgment. But then there is also the mercy seat of Christ. And those who are before that judgment are those who've had their sins washed by the blood of the Lamb. And they stand before God and they see their whole life. They see all of the things, my good, my bad, and all of those things. And all, but all of them things ain't the factor that's going to decide am I in. The thing that's going to decide am I in or not is the blood of Jesus, which has brought me before the, listen to this, the mercy seat. The mercy seat is I'm not going to give you what you, what you deserve, but I want to show you the reason why you coming in is him. Now unto him who is able to present us faultless before the throne. He going to present us faultless, even though I'm going to have many faults when I come to the throne, if he just look at my resume. But he going to present me faultless because of what his blood can do for us. Wash away our sins. I had a hand. Go ahead. In natural life, yes, but in terms of these two judgments, that's two different things. Because when you, on these judgments, you stand before the great white throne, it's nothing but, it's, it's, it's not, it ain't, it's no, don't even say nothing. It's, not, it's just punishment coming. But when you've been brought before the mercy seat, it's not even a pleading of your case. It's not a, man, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, you're going to have works that you did in life that may get burnt up because you didn't do that for Christ and all of these things. You're going to see all of these things going on. But at the same time, you standing before the mercy seat, check this out, of Christ has already brought you before him in a way that you are sinless in terms of your stance before him because of the blood. Not sinless in terms of because you're going to see the whole resume. You gonna see everything. You gonna see. You go. You gonna be. You gonna weep over your sins, but at the same time rejoice because of what His grace has accomplished in us. And so, this is what's gonna give us an eternal shout. Not that He gonna not let me see how awful I really am, though. No. Like I'm gonna let you. See, I saw everything you did, everything you thought. And so, when you get up in here, you gonna know it's because of the Lamb. That's why you are gonna run to Him. You gonna say, "Great is the Lamb." You go. You go worship. 
because you're going to have access to something that you've just been reminded.